اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لسن نمبر 205 سورة العنکبوت آیا نمبر 24 تو 30 فما كان جواب قومه and the answer of his people was not except that they said الا ان قالوا اقتلوه او حرقوه that they said kill him or burn him now as I mentioned to you earlier that the ayat they were talking about what Ibrahim a.s. said to his people. And then in the middle, there was Jumla Murtarida. And then after that, there is a continuation of what Ibrahim a.s. said to his people. So this is from where his speech continues. It resumes. Ibrahim a.s. how did he invite his people? Did he threaten them? Was he rude towards them? No. He called them with logic. He gave them explanation. He told them why what they were doing was wrong. And at the same time, he gave them better alternatives as well. When he said to them, فَبْتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الرِّزْقِ He showed them the other way. He showed them the right way. And he said to them, ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ That don't worship idols, instead you should worship only Allah. So his da'wah was full of love, it was full of affection, it was full of logic, it made complete sense. But what was the reaction of his people? فَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ The only response of his people was إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا Except that they said اُقْتُلُوهُ Kill him أَوْ حَرِّقُوهُ Or burn him حَرِّقُوهُ From the root address حَرَّقَ تحريق. And تحريق is to burn something To set something on fire And why did they say burn him? That put him to death by burning him Either kill him How? Like for example by stoning him or just killing him by the sword or something. And if you don't want to do that, we should حَرِّقُوهُ Burn him to death. And we learn this elsewhere as well. In Surah Al-Safat, Ayah 97-98 That قَالُوا بُنُوا لَهُ بُنْيَانًا فَأَلْقُوهُ فِي الْجَحِيمِ فَأَرَادُوا بِهِ كَيْدًا فَجَعَلْنَاهُمُ الْأَسْفَلِينَ They said, construct for him a furnace and throw him into the burning fire. And they intended for him a plan, but we made them the most debased. In Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayah 68-70, we learn, قَالُوا حَرِّقُوهُ وَانْصُرُوا آلِهَتَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ فَاعِلِينَ The people said, burn him and support your gods if you are to act, if you are to do anything. And what did they do? They actually set up the fire. And they actually threw Ibrahim into the fire. But what happened? قُلْنَا يَا نَارُ كُونِي بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O fire, be coolness and safety upon Ibrahim. وَأَرَادُوا بِهِ كَيْدًا فَجَعَلْنَاهُمُ الْأَخْسَرِينَ And they intended for him harm, but we made them the greatest losers. فَأَنْجَاهُ اللَّهُ مِنَ النَّارِ So Allah saved him from the fire. They threw him into the fire, but Allah saved him from the fire. How? By making it cool and harmless for him. By making it peaceful for him. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمِ يُؤْمِنُونَ Indeed, in that are surely signs, many lessons, great evidences for those people who believe. It's only the believers who will get these lessons. So what are the lessons? That when a person calls people to Islam, when a person calls people to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what happens? He faces opposition. Nuh alayhi salam, he faced opposition. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, he faced opposition. Ibrahim alayhi salam, look at his da'wah. But still, he faced opposition from people. It doesn't mean that he was rude. He was being offensive. This is a fact that when you call people to Allah, you will face opposition. That when a person is calling people to Allah, then Allah is going to aid him. Allah is on his side. People can try to plot, they can try to plan, they can have many conspiracies in order to harm you, in order to put you in the fire and burn you, in order to kill you. They can do their best. But remember that Allah is on your side. They threw Ibrahim in the fire. But what did Allah say? يَا نَارُكُونِي بَرْضًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ Ibrahim, Because everything is loyal to Allah. Everything is. Except for the human beings. So, what do we see? That people, they can try to harm you, but they cannot cause you any loss because you're calling people to Allah. And if you are sincere, if you're truthful in your calling, 
then Allah will help you. When people are facing some difficulty, especially in this path, what do they say? If only my husband was supported. I could do so much. It would be so easy for me. If only my children were cooperative. If only I didn't have to work. And if only I didn't have to do that. But what do we see? That you have the support of Allah. And what greater support can you get? Even if the entire world has abandoned you, when you're on this path, Allah is with you. He is supporting you. So no matter what people try to do to harm you, even if they cut off from you, even if they leave you, you're not alone. You're in the way of Allah. So seek help from Him. Ask Him to help you. Ask Him to strengthen you. Ask Him to guide you. What else do we learn from this ayah? That وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مُخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ That whoever has taqwa of Allah, that Allah makes a way out for him from every problem. You see over here, Ibrahim a.s. Yes, he did suffer momentarily. He was thrown into the fire. It was as though he was defeated. It was as though he was finished. But what happened? That difficulty was only for some time. Allah made a way out for him. So yes, when you're in the way of Allah, you will suffer from difficulties, but always remember, they are temporary. They're just there for some time. That's it. And after some time, you will have a way out. Allah will make a way out for you. But you have to be strong. And you have to rely upon Allah. You have to have positive thoughts about Allah. That whenever you feel alone, just remember that Allah has sent everyone away so that it can be just Him and you alone. So whenever you're alone, don't feel bad that, oh, if I only had their support, and I, if only this person was with me. Yes, it would be good. However, Allah is with you. Yes. Any wisdom behind that? That how come in the story of Ibrahim a.s. all of a sudden something is mentioned? Because this is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, when you're telling a story, how do you tell a story? Do you just tell facts? Okay, this happened, and that happened, and that happened. It becomes boring. Isn't it? But when in the middle of the story you put in details and lessons and what you can learn, then it makes it more relevant to you. So this is an evidence that this is a kalam of Allah. And the mushrikeen of Makkah, they believed in Ibrahim a.s. They believed in him, they respected him. So in the middle of the story they're being taught that the same message goes for you as well. If you deny the Prophet wasallam, the people before also denied. And go and look. You deny the resurrection, go and look around yourself and you will find many evidences. وَقَالَ And he said, Ibrahim a.s. he said, to who? To his people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him from the fire. So he went to his people and he said, إِنَّمَا اتَّخَزْتُمْ Indeed, you all have only taken. مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Other than Allah. أَوْسَانًا Idols. Meaning you have only taken, other than Allah, idols. The only reason why you worship them is what? مَوَدَّةَ بَيْنِكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا As a bond of affection among you in worldly life. It's not because these idols can actually help you. The only reason why you worship them is because they are a means of creating affection between all of you in worldly life. Mawaddata. Mawaddata is from the root letters wow, dal, dal. Would. What does that mean? Love. And mawadda is mutual love, mutual friendship. It's not one-sided love. It's when all the people, they love one another. Mutual friendship, mutual love. And this part of the eye has been understood in two ways. That worshipping idols, min dunillahi awsanan, worshipping idols, has become a means of mawadda tabaynikum fil hayat dunya. It has become a means of love and friendship among you in this dunya. So it's idol worship that has brought you close together. And because this idol worship has brought you close together in this dunya, this is why even if you see idol worship as wrong, you're not willing to leave it. Why? Because it unites you. It keeps you together. And if you leave it, what's going to happen? You're going to become a minority. You'll be cut off from the rest of your people. So what does it mean? That worshipping idols has become a means of love and friendship among you. So in this shared aqidah, your friendship increases. Secondly, this has been understood as 
that the love and friendship among you, that you people, the love that you have among yourselves, the friendship that you have with one another, this friendship, this love is a means of what? Of idol worship. Your mutual love has caused this idol worship amongst you. That out of great love and out of great respect for your forefathers, you are worshipping idols, even though you see idol worship as something that is wrong. It was because they loved one another. They had great respect for one another, especially their forefathers. They were not willing to leave idol worship. Because when Ibrahim a.s. he showed to them through many, many ways about how these idols could not benefit them at all. Remember the incident that we learned about earlier? That he remained behind while the people were gone and he broke all the idols. And when the people came back and he made them understand that, look, these idols cannot do anything for you. They cannot even defend themselves and how can they help you? So what did they say? Our forefathers have always done this. We cannot leave the way of our forefathers. The mushrikeen of Makkah had the same problem. That although they realized that idol worship did not make any sense, it was something wrong, but because they loved their forefathers, they respected them a lot. This is why they didn't want to leave idol worship. So what's the second meaning? That out of love for one another, out of friendship for one another, you remain firm on this idol worship. إِنَّمَا اتَّخَذْتُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْسَانًا مَوَدَّةَ بَيْنِكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا ثُمَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Then on the day of judgment, what's going to happen? يَكْفُرُ بَعْضُكُمْ بِبَعْضُ Some of you are going to deny others. Some of you are going to deny, they're going to disown others. That right now you don't leave idol worship, why? Because of your forefathers, because of your leaders. But on the day of judgment, your leaders, your forefathers, what are they going to do? They're going to disown you. They're going to disassociate from you. They're not going to say, Oh Allah, they really loved us and this is why they followed our way. No. يَكْفُرُ بَعْضُكُمْ بِبَعْضُ وَيَلْعَنُ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا And some of you will curse one another. Who will curse the other? The followers will curse the leaders. So the leaders, what are they going to do? Disown the followers. And the followers, what are they going to do? Curse the leaders. وَمَأْوَاكُمُ النَّارِ And all of you, your abode will be hellfire. وَمَا لَكُمْ مِنْ نَاصِرِينَ And you will have no helpers. Now Ibrahim a.s. has a final warning. His warning over here has become very strong. وَمَأْوَاكُمُ النَّارِ وَمَا لَكُمْ مِنْ نَاصِرِينَ This is very harsh. But remember, this was not at the beginning. This was as a final warning to the people because they weren't willing to believe at all. Now the Sayyid, it teaches us something very, very important. That when he said to the people that these idols you have taken, why? Why do you worship them? Because they are a means of strengthening your friendship, your love. And because you love one another, this is why you worship these idols. So this shows to us that there are two reasons behind actions such as shirk that are clearly against haq, that clearly go against aql. That although something is illogical, it contradicts the reality, it contradicts the truth, and a person sees that, still he will do it. Why will he do it? Two reasons. That either it is the ties of kinship, or family ties, or friendship, that unite people on an ideology. And the fear of being abandoned by your loved ones, the fear of being abandoned by your friends, is something that will prevent you from doing something otherwise. Because your family is doing it. Everybody is doing it. You can't do something different. Because they are doing it, you are a part of them, you cannot do something otherwise. Even if what they are doing does not make any sense. Like for example at weddings, people do the most weirdest of things even. Doesn't make any sense? It doesn't make any sense. But why do they do it? Everybody does it. And if we don't do it, it looks so bad. If we don't do it, what are they going to say about us? What are they going to think of us? So a person will do something wrong, will do something baseless, something that is senseless. Why? Just because his family is doing it. His friends are doing it. And the second reason is that people, they come together for one purpose, for one thing. And as a result of that, they form friendships. They form love and affection between one another. And because that thing has become a means of bringing them together, this is why they don't want to leave it. 
Because if they leave it, then that friendship won't continue. That relationship will not last. Now we see that Ibrahim a.s. he invited the people to Tawheed by presenting clear evidences, clear proofs. And look at their reaction. It was so harsh. It was so severe. اُقْتُلُوهُ أَوْ حَرِّقُوهُ He presented to them in such a logical way and their reaction, burn him, kill him. Why? Because their love for idols, their love for one another, it urged them to react this extremely. They loved one another, they were very loyal to one another, and they were very, very loyal to idol worship as well. And because Ibrahim salam spoke up against that, this is why they reacted so severely. Normally, a person cannot go against his people, against his family. Why? Because he fears that if I leave them, and when I am in difficulty, who will help me? No one will help me. I will be all alone. So whether people are right or wrong, what does a person do? He sides with them. Now the people of Ibrahim as well, they held on to idolatry, they stayed with one another out of the same fear. That although what Ibrahim is saying makes sense, but we cannot listen to him. Because if we listen to him, then what's going to happen? We'll be cut off from the rest of the society. And when we're cut off from the rest of the society, when we're alone, who is going to help us? And there's something very natural, that whenever people are living together, whenever they're working together, they develop you know, a circle of friends. And these friends, they come together at times of happiness, at times of sadness, at times of weddings and deaths and birthdays and so on and so forth. They are a means of support for one another. And whatever they do becomes a means of strengthening their bonds of love and friendship. And if a person says, okay, I'm not going to celebrate the birthday. I'm not going to go to that party. Let's say. Then what's going to happen? He will be cut off from the rest of his friends. And he does not want to do that. This is why he will do something wrong anyway. Why? Just to maintain his friendship. Just to maintain his love. And this is what prevented the nation of Ibrahim from accepting the truth. And he said this on their faces. That you know the truth, yet you are not accepting it. Why? Because this idol worship is a means of your friendship. The mushrikeen of Makkah, they had the same problem. That if we begin to worship Allah alone, we have all of these friendships and connections because of these idols. People from all over Arabia, they come, they respect us because of these idols, because we take care of them. And if we abandon their worship, who will come and see us? Who will come and visit us? You understand? Now, this is what prevented them from believing in Muhammad wasallam. And today also if you look at it, what is it that prevents us from doing something that is so clear? Same fear. Same concern. If I do something different, my friends won't like me anymore. If I don't cooperate with them in this wrong, who will come to my house? Who will I be with? I will become a loner. And this is especially difficult at the beginning. When the trend is being set. You understand? That as the Prophet ﷺ, as he was preaching, at the beginning, it was very, very difficult for people to take the step to become Muslim. Because for them to become Muslim was going against the entire society. And after all, when everybody was Muslim, when you accept Islam, what's the big deal? It's not that difficult. Like for example, if you're the first one to wear hijab in your family, isn't it difficult? Yes. But if everybody is doing it and you do it, what's the big deal? So, this is why the reward of as sabiqun is very great. Those who are the first ones. First ones to come ahead. When no one else is doing it, they're the only ones. And the thing is, that when a person does something in this way for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he will also develop more friendships. Isn't it so? That when you do something for the sake of Allah, then okay, you will be cut off from the people whom you were with before. But now you will make other friends. And this friendship, this new friendship is going to be a better one. It's going to be a stronger one. Why? Because what is the uniting factor? It's the worship of Allah. It's the love of Allah. And because Allah is eternal, this is why this relationship, this bond, this friendship, this affection will also be eternal. It's not just limited to dunya. It continues in the akhirah. On the other hand, when it's just something of this dunya that unites people, like idol worship, 
like some cultural practices, then what happens? As the people die, as those cultural practices become ancient, become old, then what happens? Those friendships also, they discontinue. If a people are together because of some work they do, because of some business they have, then as the business crashes, as the work comes to an end, as the school year comes to an end, what happens? That friendship also goes away. It finishes. But because Allah is al hay this is why friendship that is made for His sake, that does not die. So what do we learn over here? Ibrahim salam warns them that today you are together, but on the day of judgment, what's going to happen? Some of you are going to yakfuru. You're going to deny one another. And others are going to yal'anu. They're going to curse one another. Your friendship is going to turn into enmity on the day of judgment. In Surah Al-Zukhruf, Ayah 67, we learn, الْأَخِلَّاءُ يَوْمَئِذٍ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُو Close friends on the day of judgment will be enemies to each other. إِلَّا الْمُتَّقِينَ Except for who? The righteous. In Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayah 67 to 68, we learn, وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّا أَطَعْنَا سَادَتَنَا وَكُبَرَاءَنَا فَأَضَلُّونَ السَّبِيلَ the people in hellfire, they will say, Our Lord, we obeyed our masters and our dignitaries, and they led us astray from the right way. رَبَّنَا آتِهِمْ ضِعْفَيْنِ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ وَالْعَنْهُمْ لَعْنًا كَبِيرًا Our Lord, give them double punishment and curse them with a great curse. So what do we learn in this ayah? What's the lesson that we learn from this ayah? That we should be very, very careful about the friendships that we have, about the associations that we have with people. What is it that unites us? And why are we cooperating with someone? Is it the deen or is it something else? If it's anything that contradicts the deen, it will lead to chaos, it will lead to failure, it will lead to fights, it will lead to arguments. What else do we learn? Shirk is also what? Is a means of being a part of a social circle. And other things as well. They are what? A means of being a part of a social circle. And that's it. What else? That anything that contradicts the Qur'an and Sunnah, whether it is something that is a cultural practice, or it is something that everybody does, or it is something that is very famous, that is new, that is in, but if it goes against the Qur'an and Sunnah, we shouldn't be doing it. Because if we do it today just to maintain friendship, just to gain the praise of people, approval of people, this is only temporary. So what happened then? فَآمَنَ لَهُ لُوط Ibrahim a.s. What happened to him? He went against his people. They were doing shirk. He didn't cooperate with them just to maintain their love and friendship. He left. He stayed different. He believed only in Allah. He worshipped only Him. So he was alone. But did he remain alone eternally? No. فَآمَنَ لَهُ لُوتْ Lut believed in him. What does it show to us? That if for the sake of the deen, you have to go against your family, your culture, your people, and as a result of that, you lose your friendships, don't worry. Allah will replace you with better friends. فَآمَنَ لَهُ لُوط لُوط عليه السلام believed in him. وَقَالَ And Ibrahim عليه السلام said, إِنِّي مُهَاجِرٌ إِلَى رَبِّي Indeed, I will immigrate to my Lord. What does it mean by that? I will do hijrah to my Lord? I will do hijrah to wherever my Lord tells me. Or I will do hijrah إِلَى رَبِّي meaning فِي رَبِّي In his way, for his sake. That since I cannot stay over here anymore, people don't let me live. They try to kill me. They threw me into the fire to burn me. Since I cannot stay here anymore, therefore I'm going to leave. And where am I going to go? Wherever my Lord wants me to go. إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Indeed, He is the mighty and He is the wise. So what happened? Lut a.s. He left his people and he immigrated from Iraq to Palestine. And Lut a.s. he also did hijrah. Because remember Lut a.s. was his nephew. So he also did hijrah. And where did he go to? He went along with Ibrahim a.s. But he proceeded beyond Palestine and he went to the city of Sodom. What does it show to us? That if a person is unable to practice his religion somewhere to the point that it becomes a threat to his life like it was for Ibrahim a.s. Then should he compromise? Just to maintain friendship and approval? No. Allah has given a better alternative. وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ And look at the reward that was given to him. You think he was alone? No, Allah gave him another family. And we granted to him Ishaq and Ya'qub. 
Ishaq alayhi salam. And then after Ishaq alayhi salam, Ya'qub, grandson. وَجَعَلْنَا And we made فِي ذُرِّيَّتِهِ In his progeny النُّبُوَّةَ The prophethood وَالْكِتَابَ And the book. That after him, all of the prophets that came were from his descendants, from his children, from the Bani Israel. And the last messenger from the Bani Ismail. So the prophethood, it was left in his progeny. And not just prophethood, but also Al-Kitab. And Al-Kitab over here is Ism Jins, meaning all of the scriptures. The Torah, the Zabur, the Injil, the Quran. They were given to prophets that came from his progeny. وَآتَيْنَاهُ أَجْرَهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا And we gave him his reward even in this dunya. What was the reward that he was given in the dunya? First of all, a family. In the form of righteous children, righteous grandchildren. What else? What else was his reward that he got in the dunya? Yes, he constructed the Kaaba, yes. That prophethood was in his progeny. If you look at the sacrifices that were made by him and his family, they are preserved till today in the rituals of Hajj and Umrah. Till today they are preserved in the dunya. Also he was made the imam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا Surah Baqarah, Ayah 124. He was given rizq. And after him he was given praise. That people praised him. People of all the main religions, all the monotheistic religions, they praise him. وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ لِسَانَ صِدْقٍ عَلِيَّا so in this dunya he has reward. وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And indeed he in the hereafter is from those who are righteous. That in the hereafter he will be in the company of those who are salih. Those who are righteous, those who will be in paradise. And with him what happened? Lut alayhi salam, he was a messenger and he went to the people of the city of Sodom. So وَلُوطًا إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ And Lut when he said to his people, إِنَّكُمْ indeed you لَتَأْتُونَ الْفَاحِشَةَ that you commit fahisha. Which fahisha? Homosexuality. And this fahisha is such that ما سبقكم بها No one has preceded you in this act من أحد Anyone at all من العالمين of the worlds. No person has ever, ever committed this action before you. You are the first ones to do it. After the example of Ibrahim a.s. The example of Lut a.s. is mentioned. That look at how he even faced challenges when he was doing da'wah, when he was calling people to Allah, when he remained tahir, when he did not indulge in the same crimes that people were committing. Look at the opposition that he faced. That first of all, when he said to the people that you are committing fahisha, such fahisha that no one has ever done this before you. أَإِنَّكُمْ Do indeed all of you. لَتَأْتُونَ rijala. You all approach men. Is it this that you do? You approach men. Why? To fulfill your sexual desire. And not just that, but what taqta'oon sabila, you obstruct the road. Taqta'oon, from the root letters, qaf ta'in, qatr. And qatr is to cut something. And this is done in two ways. First of all, in the physical sense, la uqatti'anna aydiyakum wa arjulakum min khilafin. Remember? That to cut something, to sever something. Faqta'u aydiyahuma. And secondly, it is also in the intangible sense, to cut something, meaning to cross a path or to obstruct it, to break it off, to not let other people go beyond it. So, وَتَقْتَعُونَ sabil. What does it mean by this, that you cut the way? This is understood as, first of all, that you obstruct the road. Which road? The road that travelers take. Remember that Sodom, the city of Sodom, it was located at a place by which this main highway would go. And this main highway, it was taken by many, many travelers. Especially people who were businessmen, trading. And remember, we have learned earlier that their ruins, they can still be seen from Imam Mubin. Remember? From the clear road, from the main highway. So, these people, the people of Lut a.s., what would they do? As the travelers would pass by, they would mistreat them. How? That they would rob them they would lie in wait on the road, they would kill the people, and they would loot their possessions. And it is said that even the travelers, they would commit evil acts with them. They would even rape them. Like we see that later on, when the angels came to Lut salam in the form of men, what happened? What did they say? Hand over these travelers to us. So, taqta'oon as-sabil. 
And as a result, what would happen? People avoided taking that pathway. People avoided taking that road. And when they would avoid taking that road, they would have to take a longer route, which was so difficult for them. But it was so insecure because of the actions that these people would commit. Secondly, what taqta'una sabil has been understood as that you cut the way, meaning you obstruct the way, which way? Sabilullah. In other words, you stop people from the way of Allah. How? Like for example, when Lut a.s. he advised them, what did they say in mockery? Innahum unasun yatatahharun. And so other people, they would not listen to what Lut a.s. would advise them. So they would stop people from the way of Allah. They were doing wrong themselves and at the same time they were stopping other people. Thirdly, تَقْطَعُونَ sabil قَطْعُ sabil is understood as قَطْعُ nasl That you cut the way, the sabil of human progeny by your practices. That when you approach men to fulfill your sexual desires, how is your progeny going to continue? You're cutting the way. You're cutting this normal method, this normal way. This sabil, this way of human race to continue, you're cutting that off. And taqta'una sabil, fourthly, has also been understood as that you have cut off the usual known fitra way of fulfilling desires. That even when you do approach your women, you go into their dubur. وَتَأْتُونَ And you all commit فِي نَادِيكُمْ In your meetings المُنْكَرْ The false, the wrong. نَادِي From the root letters نُون دَال وَاو Or نُون دَال Yeah. Any other word from the same root? نِدَاء What does نِدَاء mean? Call. To call out to someone. To raise one's voice. And sometimes it's also used for a loud sound. And نَدْيُن Is used for dampness, wetness. You may have heard of نَدَى what is nada? Dew. In the morning as you go outside you see dew. It's damp. It's wet. Now, there's a connection between dampness and speaking loudly. What? That if your mouth is too dry, if your throat is dry, can you scream out? Can you yell? Can you make loud voices? Can you speak? No, you cannot. Your mouth has to be damp in order to keep talking. This is why people keep sipping on water as they're talking. And nadi, the word that you see over here, nadi is used for a meeting, a gathering, a place where people meet together, or a gathering of people. فَلْيَدْعُ نَادِيَهُ So he should call his nadi, meaning his assembly, his friends. Because when people are sitting together in a gathering, what happens? They raise their voices. You can imagine the parliament house. What happens? People raise their voices. So, وَتَأْتُونَ فِي نَادِيكُمْ نَادِيكُمْ It refers to your gatherings. That in your gatherings, what do you do? Al-Munkar. Wrong things. That when you sit together, what kind of actions do you commit? Wrong actions. It is said that they would commit this act of homosexuality together in groups. And also, وَتَأْتُونَ فِي نَادِيكُمُ الْمُنْكَرِ That when you sit together in gatherings, what do you talk about? What do you discuss? Bad things, obscene things, about committing evil things. And we have to be very careful that when we're sitting with our friends, what do our conversations revolve around? This shows to us that a person cannot do something wrong unless and until he has some bad company. Because they had a nadi, this is why they were able to say munkar, do munkar. If a person does not have other people to do the same munkar with him, can he do it? No. وَتَأْتُونَ فِي نَادِيكُمُ الْمُنْكَرُ So what happened when he made his people feel that look, what you're doing is wrong. فَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ So the response of his people was not إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا Except that they said إِتِّنَا بِعَذَابِ اللَّهِ Bring us a punishment of Allah إِن كُنْتَ مِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ If you're truthful. Meaning they refused to believe in him and they said if you're really truthful about it, go ahead and bring the punishment. So what happened? Qala, Lut alayhi salam prayed, Rabbi, O oh my Lord, unsurni, help me, ala al qawm al mufsideen, against the people who are mischief makers, against the people who are troublemakers, those who are mufsid. Help me against them. How? By sending your punishment. Because they challenged him that if you're truthful, bring the punishment. Because Lut alayhi salam warned them, if you continue on your ways, then the punishment is going to come upon you. So then Lut alayhi salam, he prayed to Allah, that, Ya Allah, help me against these people. How? By sending the punishment on them. So what happened then? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his call. Okay, we'll listen to the recitation. 
سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته